Welcome to the world of scale modeling with Mike Ashey, where techniques, tips, and creativity come alive with dozens of tutorials, projects, tape-up reviews, and picture references to help you build better scale models and enjoy our wonderful hobby. Welcome to the final episode of Building and Detailing the Monogram Revell 148 Scale B25J. In episode 17, we'll do the final assembly and then I'll show you pictures of the finished model. All the sub-assemblies have been painted, detailed, and weathered, and now it's time to start putting it together, a step at a time. The clear parts are also ready, and I even added a little bit of weathering to the top of the canopy. The landing gear were lacking the two hydraulic lines for the braking systems, and so I added them with stiff brass wire that I inked with a silver indelible marker. The engines will need to be glued onto the nacelles with testers glue so that I had some working time in order to properly position the engines inside the cowlings. Since the 3D printed engines are resin and testers glue won't stick to resin, the solution was to glue a plastic disc to the back of each resin engine with super glue so that testers glue would attach plastic to plastic. The elevators were positioned in place and then tiny drops of Elmer's glue were applied to the hinges on the underside to secure them in place. The aft fuselage canopy, which fits very well, was attached with tiny drops of white glue. The cockpit canopy was narrow at the back end. To stretch the canopy out just a little bit, I attached these tiny white tabs which you can see in the red arrow, to the back side of the cockpit. This provided for a much better fit of the base of the canopy to the frame of the cockpit. I used one tiny drop of super glue at each white tab location to secure the canopy in place. I then filled in any openings between the canopy and the fuselage with several applications of Elmer's glue and touched up the Elmer's glue after it dried with the detail brush and then a coat of clear flat. The blue arrows denote where most of the Elmer's glue was applied. A nice drop of tester's glue was applied to the back of the engine. I then balanced the model between my legs on the wings so that I could place the cowling in place and carefully position the engine. The tester's glue gave me about 20 seconds of working time. I followed the same procedure for the other engine, but at this point I haven't glued the cowlings in place yet. To glue the cowlings in place, I applied a tiny bead of Elmer's glue around the inside edge of each cowling and then carefully positioned it. I also stippled some chipping on the top part of the canopy toward the back to hide a slight flaw. Next, I attached the landing gear, the landing gear doors, and then the bomb bay doors. The landing gear looks pretty good, especially with the addition of the hydraulic lines. To add just a tiny bit more detail, I added a stiff brass wire, which I inked with an indelible marker to each landing gear door. These door actuators are very prominent in actual photos of the aircraft. I found these cutting edge meteor production resin cast landing lights and navigational lights years ago on eBay and I decided to use two of the landing lights for this model. All I did was paint the back side of each light silver and then attach them with Elmer's glue. The landing lights look pretty good and note the random chipping on the leading edge of the wing. I attached the 50 caliber machine guns to the fuselage gun packs and then I attached the ailerons and secured them in place with tiny drops of Elmer's glue on the underside of the hinges. Next, I glued the wheels in place and then I attached the bottom entranceway hatches. The model sits nicely on its tricycle landing gear. Each machine gun in the nose was carefully glued in place with a tiny drop of Elmer's glue and I worked in sets. You have to go slow in this process to ensure that each barrel is straight and level. 
I used HO scale lenses for the red, green, and amber formation lights on the bottom side of the wing. However, I think next time I'll use decals that I punch out with my trusty Waldron punch. I attached the cutting edge navigational lights to the tips of the wings with tiny drops of Elmer's glue. Then I attached the communications and antenna arrays, the turret, and then the propellers. The last thing I attached was the speed indicator for the instruments. I hope you enjoyed the series of videos that I did on this aged but still great model that was produced by Monogram back in the mid-1980s. I included a lot of tips and techniques in this series of videos and I hope you find them helpful in building your next scale model. And now let's take a look at some of the finished photos. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up. And when you get the chance, visit our website at www.mikeashy.com where you're going to find dozens of free PDF downloads including tutorials, picture references, model galleries, projects, and my five original scale modeling books. Thanks to Ben Sound and Vidivo for the royalty-free music and happy scale modeling.